back from the holidays and back with another video. This time a guide because I haven't quite done one of these in a while and I ran into an interesting repair that I thought I'd give a shot at. Hard drives. We've all probably faced hard drive failure at some point, whether we dropped it, somehow managed to damage its port or maybe it just stopped working altogether. While I can't really do much about a dropped hard drive or one that just decided to commit suicide, I can however do something about one that has had its port damaged from mishandling. The hard drive that I have with me here today is the Western Digital Elements 1TB USB 3.0 hard drive that has unfortunately had its micro USB port torn from it by a really rough end user. It was then thrown to me because yeah, people know that I'm good at fixing shit, so yeah, after a bit of research, I did manage to find out how it can be done and I'm about to share with you how I did it in this video. Now this video covers these steps of performing this operation on a Western digital hard drive, but the same can be done on any other hard drive, be it Seagate, Samsung, Hitachi, Toshiba or whatever with a bit of modification. So with that out of the way, let's get to reviving this damaged hard drive. The first thing that we need to do with this repair is to understand that in situations like these, unless you knocked your hard drive pretty hard, chances are it's only your hard drive's PCB that is broken and that the platters inside are still fine and have all of your data in them intact. Because of this, it's entirely possible to replace the board and recover your drive completely, but before you go out and look for replacement parts, there's a few things that you should know beforehand. Number 1 you need to get the exact same board part number as the broken one. And number two, even with that, it still won't be able to run just yet. And I hope that you're good at soldering and desoldering parts, because we're going to need to have to transplant the two hard drive BIOS chips from the broken board into the new working donor one. The reason for this is that we need the original BIOS chips that contain the site code and date code of the disk platters and transfer those onto the new working PCB. Now that we have that out of the way, let's start with actually running through these steps. Once you pry open your external hard drive, remove the drive from it, pick it up and flip it around, you should see the PCB behind it. Now if we peek down to the corner of this hard drive, you'll notice a series of numbers. Mine reads 2060-771961-001 Rev A. This is the board number of your PCB and this is what we're going to use to start looking for donor parts on the internet. In my case, I got my part for about 6 US dollars on Taobao but you can also look for them on AliExpress or Amazon, albeit for a bit higher than I got mine. Now if you're lucky enough, a simple board swap will work just fine, but in case it doesn't, which in my case, it didn't, we'll need to remove the existing PCB from the hard drive by undoing these 6 torch screws, and once we remove it and flip it around, we can see the two BIOS chips that we have to transplant onto the new board. One on the bottom right corner, and another on the center top, in the middle of a lot of other transistors and chips. Yes, this repair is not for the faint of heart, and yes, I know it's easier to go out and buy a new hard drive, but this video is not about that. It's about learning something new, and more importantly for me, the pride, satisfaction, and challenge that comes with this kind of repair. You'll also really need a steady hand, and more importantly, a lot of patience, and oh of course, a magnifying glass of sorts will help as well. With that disclaimer out of the way, I'm going to pick up my trusty heat gun. Here you can see that I've got a funnel attachment on its head to concentrate the heat onto a localized spot and set its heat settings to about two-fifths of the way. Might not look like it, but my power settings actually goes over the indicators shown quite substantially, so it's about two-fifths from there. Now I did some testing earlier and found that it takes about a minute and 15 seconds from code for the solder on the joints to melt and for me to be able to remove the chips, so I'm going to do just that. First, by removing the BIOS chip up the top. And then by removing the one down the bottom. Ah, 
Another important thing to note as well is where you took the chip out from, aka don't swap the chips around, and also their orientation, as you need to put them back in later exactly the same way. Use the small round indent on the chip itself to help you with this orientation. In this case, both chips have their indents on the bottom left corner when installed, so I'll be reinstalling them back the same way. Continuing on, now that we have the chips we want removed, we're going to have to remove the exact same chips from the donor board so that we can replace them with our original ones. I'm going to go ahead and solder back the original BIOS chips onto the donor board. A bit of flux always helps. Screw the PCB back onto our hard drive and we're done! All that's left is to test if our operation was successful and voila! We've successfully managed to revive this hard drive. So yeah, there it is. A guide on how to restore your hard drive with a broken port. Intimidating? Yes. Hard? Eh, not so much. Now I'm not saying that this is going to be everyone's cup of tea to go ahead with this procedure, but hey, at least next time if you ever run into the same problem, you can decide on whether you want to toss it out, send it off for repair, or maybe take up this challenge and try it out for yourself. Hope this video was helpful or at least entertaining. If it was, give it a like, drop a comment down below on your thoughts, and maybe consider subscribing to my channel for more similar content. My name is Yang aka Tech Rodent. I hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas and have a happy new year. I'll catch you guys again in 2018.